At the other side of the lake comes a familiar looking animal. It's a dinosaur called Coelophysis, a light-weighted predator. God designed long and streamlined legs and feet, hollow and light bones that give the Coelophysis some speed. Plus, God designed a long slender tail helping the Coelophysis to stay well balanced and change directions quickly. The Coelophysis' teeth were good on killing small prey such as insects, fish, and small animals. He can even saw his food almost like a knife, making it useful for eating the carrion from larger animals. Originally though, Coelophysis was a herbivore, and those teeth could have been used for certain types of vegetation. A popular fossil showed the bones from other animals in its stomach. Paleontologists thought that the bones were from baby Coelophysis, and thought that the adults were cannibals. But in 2002, further observations revealed that the bones were actually from some kind of crocodiliomorphs, and not baby Coelophysis. So hopefully, adult Coelophysis didn't eat their babies at all. Males are larger than the females, and so their gender are described into two distinct forms, robust and graceful. A famous discovery was found at Ghost Ranch in 1947 where a group of Coelophysis were found together and were possibly killed by the Great Flood. However, we aren't sure if Coelophysis really lived in groups, or if this was a coincidental gathering like how crocodiles and bears would gather to hunt certain prey. Another possibility is that the Coelophysis group were running from the Great Flood when it began to occur. Ornitholestes was the first theropod discovered in the 20th century. She's the size of an average dog, and the length of her tail is nearly more than half her body length. Her tail can be used as a counterbalance when she runs or jumps. People used to believe that her species had a display crest located on top of the nose. But the crest was actually a piece of the skull that had been badly crushed during fossilization, and so the Ornitholesti species never had a nasal crest at all. Another error was the theory that Ornitholestes was a quick and agile predator. The problem is that parts of her legs are short. As a lightweight animal, Ornitholestes could have moved fast, just not fast enough to chase down prey that are as big as herself. Her head is also small, too small to catch prey. She was designed with long arms that were two-thirds the length of her legs, and her hands each have two long fingers and one smaller finger. The smaller finger is as handy as a thumb. God made it that way so that Ornitholestes can be able to grab things easily. Like many predatory animals, the Ornitholestes was cursed to be a meat-eater after the fall of man. They are good at hunting in dense forests and open plains. Her species might have developed a strategy to catch prey with their hands and kill them with a strong bite. In her mouth are sharp conical teeth that can slice through meat and can easily kill any kind of small prey. Other than eating carrion, Ornitholestes can prey on lizards, small mammals, insects, frogs, baby dinosaurs, and even birds. Most of the dinosaurs that we know are big, but God has also designed smaller dinosaurs, like this Compsognathus. He's famous for being the size of a chicken, but grows a little longer. God has given the Compsognathus really good eyes that can spot the slightest movement. Once he spots prey, he'll outrun it thanks to his gifted speed. Some people think that Compsognathus are good at hunting fast-moving prey like lizards, much like how cats are good at hunting mice. The main source of prey seemed to be lizards like this Bavarisaurus, because a complete skeleton of one was found in the fossilized stomach of a Compsognathus. But he can also eat insects and small mammals. The completion of the Bavariosaurus' skeleton suggests that the Compsognathus swallow his prey whole rather than chewing it. Epidexipteryx is a very mysterious animal, because we don't know whether God made it to be a bird or a dinosaur. 
A reason why it's thought to be a bird is because of these four long structures on his tail. Scientists think that the structures are feathers. However, they don't look like feathers and they even don't have any barbs. No known dinosaur was designed with this feature other than Epidexipteryx. Maybe the tail itself was shattered and split somehow during fossilization. Or God designed them as a unique kind of scale for display. Or to easily distinguish the animal almost like his other animal creation. The Longi Squarma, an extinct kind of lizard with tall hockey shaped scales. This lizard was once thought to have a double row of these tall scales and would use them for gliding. But right now it's believed that the Longi Squarma had only one row of these tall scales and would use them for display or for threatening by scaring a predator away. Other reasons why Epidexipteryx might not be a bird is that it was designed with three long fingers on each hand. And he also has teeth only at the very front of the mouth. If Epidexipteryx really is a dinosaur, then he could be the smallest dinosaur ever because he's the size of a pigeon. He's like the size of an ant in comparison to the world's largest dinosaurs. But we aren't sure if the fossil of this animal was a juvenile or an adult. Why does he have such long fingers? Some scientists think that the Epidexipteryx could use his long fingers to look for bugs inside of trees. Almost like how the endangered I.I. lemur would hunt for bugs. But this wasn't the kind of bug he was having in mind. This is Arthroplora. He's a giant member of the bug kind that millipedes and centipedes belong to. But he's as long as a first generation smart car and can stand as tall as a man. Fortunately though, the Arthroplora is a vegetarian. An average adult would have had to eat about 5 pounds of vegetation each day. But that doesn't mean he's not defenseless. He could probably bite at his enemies even though his mandibles might not be very powerful. His other source of defense is that his whole body is made up of 30 individual plates, and under each of them are a pair of legs that give him some speed. God might have given the Arthroplora the job to spread pollen and spores to help reproduce the forest as are some species of bugs doing that today. Paleontologists not only found fossils of Arthroplora, they have also found fossilized footprints, possibly made during the Great Flood. A popular find of Arthroplorus' tracks is located on the Isle of Arran in Scotland. The Guanlong's name means crown dragon in Chinese where its fossils were found. What's famous about the Guanlong is his head crest, which got placed between the nose and eyes. The crest itself is made of bone, but it's fragile. Some people guess that the crest was used only for display during the mating season. The Guanlong is obviously a theropod, and is also classified as part of the Tyrannosaur kind, because its teeth and pelvic bones are similar to T-Rex's. But most of the Guanlong's skeletal appearance doesn't look like T-Rex's, so we cannot be certain to have it be classified as a kind of T-Rex. In fact, some people think that the Guanlong is a young monolophosaurus, though it still could be its own species. <laughs> Stenon Ichosaurus is considered to be a kind of dinosaur like Truodon, a smart dinosaur with a large brain, small sickle clawed toes, and excellent eyesight. Because only the teeth of Truodon have been found, scientists tried to compare the fossils of Stenonychosaurus along with other species of the Truodontid dinosaurs to help reconstruct the famous Truodon. But because of the different size and ages of these fossils, and the many places where they were found, it hasn't helped much in recreating the Truodon. And so, the famous Truodon species itself is declared to be a tooth taxon, which means this creature was only known from its teeth. Without any skeletal fossils, there is no way we can be sure how Truodon existed. But for the Stenonychosaurus, partial remains of several individuals have been found, including fossilized nests, though they could have belonged to a different Truodontid. These nests were 1 meter long in diameter and contained 24 long teardrop shaped eggs. This female Stenonychosaurus might have laid them two at a time. Stenonychosaurs were designed with large eyes and maybe large brains that could help them understand their environment. 
but we obviously don't know how smart Truodontid dinosaurs were. A group of Stenonychosaurs have found a Huayangosaurus that had just died of old age. Some people think that the Stenonychosaurs and maybe other Truodontid species could hunt in groups, but not in a social way like lions or wolves. People think that they could have mobbed their prey, which means if more than one predator finds a single weak prey, they will all attack it at once and not work as a team. Each of the Stenonychosaurs kills their prey in their own way and will go their separate way once they're done eating. Cynosauropteryx, meaning Chinese lizard wing, is another small dinosaur like Compsognathus, but she is a little smaller. Most of the fossils that have been found showed brown impressions next to the parts of the bones. Here's a picture of one. Now at first glance, the impressions look like feathers, but it's actually decaying skin. There is a big difference between dinosaur and bird skin. Bird skin has tissues inside the large cavities called follicles, which make the feathers. Dinosaur skin doesn't have any of those, because since the sixth day of creation, God made the dinosaurs' skin smooth and scaly, like reptile skin. Scientists think that they can tell what color the Cynoceropteryx is by observing the color of the decayed skin. But thinking of the color of an extinct animal is mostly a matter of guesswork. Not only was the skin well preserved, but so were other things such as the lungs. Cynoceropteryx was designed with bellow-like lungs, just like what reptiles were designed with. Birds have flow-through lungs. A small mammal was discovered inside the stomach of a Cynoceropteryx. And finally, some eggs have been found well-preserved in the animal itself. Since the eggs were found in the Cynoceropteryx's abdomen, there is no way they were eaten. And so the Cynoceropteryx must have died before she could lay her eggs.